welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. All sources are linked up at diabetes-connections.com. In the News is brought to you by T1D Exchange. The T1D Exchange is a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving outcomes for the entire T1D population. Our top story this week, Tandem's mobile bolus feature is in limited release. Approved earlier this year, they have released the feature to a very small number of users and are expecting a wider, still limited release in the next few weeks. This is the feature that allows you to bolus by phone and use the T-Connect app to see pump data on your phone as well. It is not full pump control via phone, but it is a big step forward in terms of convenience for users and for Tandem's next product, the Moby Pump, which won't have a screen and will have full phone control. I'm asking Tandem to come on the show and share more about the features, how it all works. One thing we've learned is that you cannot dismiss alerts and alarms from the phone app. You must do so on the pump itself. I'm going to link up the site you need to sign up for the limited release and for more information. You will need to update the software on your T-Slim X2 pump and take some additional online training, and this is U.S. only. Over in Europe, the Eversense E3 gets its CE mark, European approval. This is a partnership between Essentia Diabetes Care and Sensonics. The E3 is the six-month version of the implantable CGM system. It's also approved for insulin treatment decisions, which is a switch from the XL version already available in Europe. The E3 was approved in the U.S. earlier this year. It should be distributed in Europe in the fall. New guidelines for treating diabetes in the hospital. This is from the Endocrine Society, which last updated the guidelines 10 years ago. New this time around, hospital use of CGM and insulin pump therapy, providing inpatient diabetes education as part of a comprehensive diabetes discharge planning process, use of non-insulin glucose-lowering therapies, and more. They also note that adult patients with diabetes or newly recognized hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, account for more than 30% of non-critically ill hospitalized patients. Works just as well and costs less. That's the upshot of a new study on Basoglar, the copycat insulin to Lantus, when it comes to type 2 diabetes. The findings come from 14 commercial health plans and Medicare Advantage plans. Basoglar was approved as a biosimilar by the FDA in 2015. This was a large study of thousands of patients and also showed that there was better adherence to Basoglar. No reason for that was given. It could be the lower cost. Right back to the news in a moment, but first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by the T1D Exchange. The T1D Exchange Registry is an online research study, and it's designed to harness the power of individuals with type 1. This is a research study conducted online over time, and it's designed to foster innovation and improve the lives of people with T1D. Personal information remains confidential. Participation is fully voluntary. Once enrolled, you can complete annual surveys and have the opportunity to sign up for other studies on specific topics related to T1D. By sharing opinions, experiences, and data, patients can help advance meaningful T1D treatments, care, and policy. Sign up at t1dexchange.org slash Stacey. That is t1dexchange.org slash S-T-A-C-E-Y. Back to the news, and very early here, but Swedish researchers have now identified a molecule that helps stimulate the growth of new insulin-producing cells, and they've uncovered how it works. These researchers looked at a molecule known as CID661578 and found that it binds to a protein. In doing so, it allows two other proteins to interact at higher levels, which ultimately leads to beta cell regeneration. And the team tested their molecule in zebrafish, and found that it lowered blood glucose levels when compared to a control group. They then used pig pancreas cells grown in the lab, and that's when the molecule was shown to trigger the formation of new beta cells, which then produced more insulin. Long way to go, but promising here. And finally, type 1 endurance athlete Sebastian Sassvel is taking part in the race across America this week. Called the world's premier ultra endurance race, it is a cycling event from the West Coast to the East Coast with a maximum length. You got to get it done in 12 days. That means they have to cover about 275 miles every day. It has been called a brutal version of the Tour de France. Sassville has been on the show before, and I will catch up with him after he recovers here. He has been up Mount Everest. He has run across Canada, and he did an unbelievable race across the Sahara Desert. He is sponsored by Tandem Diabetes. I am linking up how to watch his progress in particular and to see all of the results from the race across America. 
On this week's long format episode, I'm talking to Cernova's CEO all about their cell therapy and the search for a functional cure for type 1. And next week, a little less technology, a fun conversation with a woman frustrated with the limits of wearing her insulin pump, especially with skirts. So she found a new solution. And she's lived with type 1 diabetes for 40 years. We had a really fun conversation about the ups and downs and a lot more. You can listen wherever you get your podcasts, wherever you found this one, for example. And that is in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.